Okay, good morning scholars, welcome back to the channel. This morning we're going to look at sets. We're going to continue our look at sets and we're going to be talking about the different types of sets. So as a reminder, what is a set? A set is a group of things that share something in common. It doesn't mean that they, sh they share everything in common, but at least one thing they share in common. So, different, so things can belong to different sets, right? So, and some sets can overlap with each other. So we say that they intersect, as well as some sets have nothing in common with another set. So we say that they are disjoint. And we're going to look further at that, right? So a set is a group of things that share at least one trait in common. And there are three basic types of sets. So all sets will fall under one of, of these three categories. Either it's going to be a finite set, an infinite set, or a null set. The null set is also called an empty set. Alright, so remember I'm always telling you that the terms that are used in mathematics, if you understand the meaning of the word as it is used in the regular language, regular usage in the language, then you will be well on your way to understanding how it is used in mathematics. So you should always have your dictionary at hand when you are doing mathematics. Whenever you start a new topic, look at the name, the title of that topic, the, the subheadings, the different terms in that topic, and look for them in the dictionary and see what it says. Sometimes the word as used in maths is slightly different and occasionally a completely different from how it is used in, in English, but most times it is, it is um, used the same way. So if you find the meaning of the word and understand the principle of the word, then you will understand how it is used in maths. So what does the word finite mean? If you look for the word finite in the dictionary, it will tell you that something is finite if it comes to an end. Right? If there is an end to it, it's finite. So then, when we talk about a finite set, we're talking about a set which has an end. The elements in that set can be named, they can be counted. It's a certain number of elements in the set. If the set is infinite, and if you look for the word infinite in the dictionary, it will tell you, Basically, it means there is no end to it. It goes on and on and on. It's infinite. And when we speak of infinity, so infinity comes from that word infinite. Never ending, always continu continuing, progressing, on and on. So if a, if a set is infinite, then the elements or the members of that set are vast. There is no reasonable practical way in which we can name or count all the members of that set. It's just they're infinite. Not possible in your lifetime to sit and count every single one or in anybody's lifetime. And if the set is empty or null, remember there are two, two words we use, the empty set, the null set, that means Empty means what? There's nothing there. If you look for the word null in the dictionary, it will tell you emptiness, void, just blank. So the empty or null set then is empty. There are no members. There, there are no elements in that set. It's not possible for any element, anyone, anything to belong to that set based on the definition that we use for that particular set. Remember, each set is defined, right? So when we look at the definition of that set, we realize, hey, nobody can really belong to such a set. And we're going to look at examples of each of these. All right, so to recap, finite sets contain elements that can all be named or counted. Infinite sets, contain elements that cannot be reasonably named 
or count it. Because you know, of course, you're going to have people who will say, well, I could sit down and devote my life to counting this, this set. Yes, you're going to have rebels who are going to say such things. So that's why we, we put in reasonably named or counted, right? Reasonably, we don't have time to sit and count one by one. If you have the time, and when I give you the example of the infinite set, you will decide if you think you have the time to sit and count those elements, right? The empty or null set contains no possible elements. Nobody can belong. So let's look at some examples. For the finite set. So these are sets that we can name the elements. We can name them. Prime numbers, so A is a set of, remember, we name sets using capital letters. And we put our curly brackets and we define the set. There are different ways to define the set. You can actually write a statement to say what is the set. You can actually list the elements of that set. And if you can't list them all, you put three dots at the end, as I'm going to show you over here, to indicate that the elements continue. They have not all been listed. So here I've given the definition of the sets. Prime numbers between 1 and 20. There are just a fixed number of prime numbers between 1 and 20. We could name them very easily. We could list them, right? Remember, the first prime number is 2. So we have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. Eight prime numbers between 1 and 20. So we can definitely count those. Set D, students in class 5A. Now the typical class will have anywhere from, let's say, 10 students to maybe 40-something students, the, the, the typical class depending on the age group, you know, where you find yourself, and so on. But between 10 and 40-something. That's easy to count. We can count those students, right? So the students in class 5A, a typical grade 5 class, we can count how many students there are. Set F, animals at Hope Zoo. I'm pretty sure we can go up to Hope Zoo and we can count how many lions are in, 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 in their, their um, confines. We can count the crocodiles. We can, I mean, we, we might be scared. We can stay a good distance away from the lion. <laughs> we can count how many there are. We can, even the mongooses, we can count them. Even though they are slick, right? They move very fast. But it's very probable for us to go and count how many animals there are at the zoo, at any zoo. I don't think there, there is any zoo that's so vast that we would not be able to count the number of animals in that zoo. So this is a finite set. B, set B, vowels in the alphabet. We have a fixed number of vowels in our alphabet. There are five. Sometimes the letter Y is thrown in Sometimes, but basically A, E, I, O, and U. Five vowels. Pretty easy to count, right? So it's a finite set. Set Z, months that have 30 days. How many months in the year have 30 days? April, June, November, September. I think that's four Four months of the year have 30 days. So it's definitely a finite set. All right, infinite sets. Now remember we said the infinite set, it is not reasonable. It's not reasonable for anyone, not even a computer. Even a computer would have to estimate to count the elements. So for example, set C, stars in the galaxy nobody knows 
There are estimates being thrown around, or many millions, but nobody really knows, you can't help them. Girls who love apples. You don't know how many girls in the world who love apples. There's no reasonable way you could count how many girls in the world love apples. And even the word love is subjective. People change their mind about loving fru fruits or any, any food in particular. So you might count this, this girl and then tomorrow she say, you know what, I don't really like apples anymore or I don't like them today. Think of all the countries in the world and all the girls in those countries, right? It's not reasonable for us to say we could count the elements of this set. Set W, so we have set W beginning at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this tells us this is the set of whole numbers. We know whole numbers start at 0 and progress to infinity. Infinity, that tells us. It's an infinite set. We are just going to keep listing the whole numbers forever and ever and ever. Set age, people who own a car. So this is similar to the girls who love apples thing, right? Many people own cars and we could say, well, ask every head of state in every country to declare, to ask its population to declare if they own a car. We could do that, um, I guess, but even so, some persons are not going to declare for whatever reason. They may think they're trying to be tricked or whatever the reason. There is no practical way for us to get a figure as to how many persons in the entire world own a car. Right? So... This is one of the ones where somebody would say, but you know, yeah, because every, every country could declare we have that number of cars. But think about it. There is, even when we do the census in a country, it's still an estimate. Even when we count the population, how many persons are in a city, a town, it's still an estimate. Right? Let alone the entire world. So that is an infinite set. M, fish in the ocean. Nobody knows how many fish are in the ocean. First of all, you can't go to every corner of the ocean. You just don't know how many fish are there. We know that if they are bountiful, the ocean is teeming with life. Teeming with life, right? Of many different types. So it's not reasonable to think that you could count every single fish in the ocean. So that's an infinite set. Now the empty or null sets, remember, empty, nothing. Nobody can be a, a member of this set. There are no elements in this set. So, for example, set A, elephants who attend university. Elephants don't go to university. They can't read and write. Not the elephants I know. Right? So there are no elephants. I've never heard of an elephant at university. I don't think any university would accept an elephant if he applied. So as of today, we're saying that's an empty set. Could change. Boys who have swum across the Pacific. There is no boy, I'm willing to bet, there is no boy who can swim across the Pacific Ocean. Even numbers between 0 and 2. Well, the only number between 0 and 2 is 1, and 1 is not an even number, so that set is empty. Now how do we read set D? We start in the middle. X is greater than 12. This is normally a less than sign, but if we're reading from the middle, we read it with the face turning towards the X, right? So this is saying X is greater than 12 and X is less than 5. It is not possible for anything to be greater than 12 and at the same time less than 5. Is that possible? Can you be smaller than 5 and bigger than 12 at the same time? That's not possible. 
and dogs that speak French. Well, you could go to France and go from dog to dog and speak to the dog in French and see if one answers you. But as of now, we don't know of any dogs who speak French. So we're going to put our next on the block and say, this is an empty set. So we're going to also just look at these three special cases, the disjoint sets, where two sets do not overlap. These two sets have nothing in common. So the elements in this set, they have something in common with themselves, with each other, and the elements in this set have something in common with themselves, but not with the elements of the other set. They are disjoint. When the members of two sets have something in common with another set, we say that these sets intersect. And we draw them like this. So these in the intersection would share both traits. This is another way of showing the intersection of sets, but it's a special case where we say one set is a subset of another. So when everything in this set is contained within the bigger set, we can draw it like this and we, we say the smaller one is a subset of the larger one. All right, so those are your definitions for types of sets. In the next video, we're going to do some work with Venn diagrams to show how the sets inter intersect and how we can list the elements of that set. All right, so if you have benefited from this video, just drop a word to say thank you, to show your appreciation, and to share the video so others may benefit. If you have any topics that you want me to do videos on, just let me know and I'll do that for you. Please subscribe if you haven't done so by now. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.